Hi, my name is Philip. Today I will talk to you about the EFIM algorithm. I will explain what it is, how it works. Uh, EFIM is one of the most efficient algorithms for high utility item set mining. We'll see how it works together. Uh, if you want to try it also, by the way, uh, you can find the code and the data sets in the SPMF software. It is a free uh, data mining software. You can download and use it also in your research. So let me give you a brief introduction. EFIM is an algorithm that we use for high utility item set mining. High utility item set mining, what it is, it is a task in data mining. Okay, we want to analyze the data to find some values that appear in the data and that have some high importance for for you for the user okay so the classical example of high utility item set mining is we want to analyze the shopping data like what the people buy in a store to find what makes the most money okay like what the people buy together the items they buy together that make a lot of profit so there are different algorithms for this and efim is one of the fastest and also one of the most memory efficient this is one very strong aspect about this algorithm and efim also has many uh, special techniques so i think it's really interesting to talk about this algorithm so first let me define the problem okay what we want to do the high utility item set mining and then I will explain the algorithm to you. Okay. So to explain the problem in a simple way, we'll take an example about shopping. We could use other example, but shopping is something that is easy to understand. Okay, for everyone. So in high utility item set mining, we have a set of item we call I. These are the different values we can observe in the data, okay? But here for shopping, we'll have, for example, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, in my example. A will be for apple, B for bread, C for cake, D for dates, E for eggs, F for fish, and G for grapes, okay? So let's say we have a store where these products are sold, okay? And then we will try to look at what the people buy together okay to find what make the most money so that will be the idea okay so let's see more definition okay so I, I want to give you the formal definition so we have these items and also we need to define what is an item set an item set means a set of items like a set of items that you buy together so for example, we'll use this notation A, B, between brackets, it means some people buy apple and bread together, A and B, okay. So this is what we call an item set. An item set, X is a set of item, that is a subset of I. I is all the possible item, like apple, bread, and cake, and so on, okay. So this is A, B is one item set and it has a size of two we say because it contains two items apple and bread okay so that's easy right okay so let's continue also we'll define what is a transaction database in this problem transaction database what it is it is a database about the transactions of the customer what they have bought okay so, transaction database will be a set of transaction D that contains the transactions made by uh, maybe different customers. And a transaction will be a set of items that have been purchased by some customer. So, T will be a set of items, so a subset of I. I is the set of all possible items. So let's look at an example. Here we have a transaction database. In this table, it has four transactions. 
the transaction have uh, some ID, okay, T1, T2, T3, and T4. And the first transaction, T1, contain the items A, B, C, D, okay. So that means there was a customer that bought A for apple, B for bread, C for cake, D for dates, and E for eggs. Another customer in T2 bought apple, bread, and eggs, A, B, E, and so on. Okay, so we have the data like this, for example, about shopping, but it could be other things also. So this is a transaction database. Now, in the transaction database, we have what we call the TID. Each transaction has an ID, okay? So this is just some definition. So here, the first transaction, we say the ID is 1. We call it T1, okay? The second transaction, the ID is 2. We call it T2. So this just to help us uh, process the database. So we say the first one is T1, the second one is T2, and so on. Okay, so that's easy. Now, after this, we will have also other information in our database. We will have what we call the external utility. External utility, what does it mean? Okay, for shopping, it means the unit profit. For example, it means how much money the store can earn if you sell one apple or if you sell one bread or one cake and so on. So what will happen? We say that each item I among all the possible items will have uh, an external utility, a profit value. We'll call PI, okay? This is the, the profit of I the item I, like apple or bread, and so on. And this value will tell us about the importance of this item, okay? So let's look at the example at the bottom together. Here in this table, we have A5, okay? So what does it mean? It means if you buy one apple, it will produce a $5 profit for the store. We have B2, means the bread uh, yield a $2 profit, each, each bread, okay. Maybe you can buy many breads, but each bread is a $2 profit. Then we have C1, each cake is a $1 profit, and so on. So this tells us about the importance of the different item. Some item make more money. Okay, when we sell them for the store. Okay, so this is what we call the external utility or unit profit. So, also, we'll have another type of data. Okay, in each transaction, we'll also have what we call the internal utility. That means the quantity. The quantity, like how many breads you buy okay you buy one bread or you buy two breads or five breads and so on okay so we we'll have also some quantities this is what we call the internal utility so for an item i in a transaction tc the quantity we will call this q of i and tc okay this is how many uh, like bread we buy in TC, for example. So let's look at the table here to understand this. Here in the first transaction T1, we have A1. It means the, the person has bought one apple, like this, okay. So A1 means the person, the customer, has bought one apple. In the transaction two, we have A2, it means the second customer has bought two apples and so on. And also we have other values, you can see like C6 means that person has bought six uh, cakes, for example. Okay, So here we have the information about the quantities, you, how many units you buy of apples or breads and so on. 
Now, I think these, this type of information, we will want to calculate the money okay, we earn from the, the, what is uh, purchased or sold in the store. So, the money is what we call the utility in this problem. The utility of an item in a transaction means the money that the item will produce in the transaction. So, I will give you the definition and then explain with the example. So, we say that the utility of an item in a transaction TC will be the profit of this item multiplied by the quantity so how much money for each bread multiplied for example by how many breads you buy okay so let's look at an example you will see it's really simple to understand so for example i want to find the utility the money for the a the apple in the transaction one so what i need to do to find the utility of A in T1 will be to multiply the quantity by the profit. So in transaction 1, I have one apple and the apple is a $5 profit for each apple. So 5 multiplied by 1 means $5. Okay, This is the, the money generated by apple in transaction 1, what we call the utility. Okay, so this is one definition. Now let's move on. I have another example here. Okay, if we look in T2, here we have two apples, and each apple is $5. So the utility of apple in T2 will be 2 multiplied by 5. Okay, that means $10. Okay, now I will give you more definitions, okay, to define the problem we want to solve. And then I will explain to you the algorithm, okay. Another definition is the utility of an item set. An item set means a set of items, like more one or more items, like apple with bread and cake, together, okay. So we say that the utility of a set of item X in a transaction will be the sum of each item in X, like apple, bread, and cake, and the utility of each of these items in the transaction will do the sum. Okay, so let me show you this with an example. You will understand what I mean. Let's say I take the item set AC, apple and cake together. So X is AC, okay. And I want to find the money that we earned from AC in the transaction one. So here you can see in transaction one, we have one apple and one cake. The apple is $5 and the cake is $1. So we need to do the sum of this, okay? One apple multiplied by five dollar plus one cake for one dollar, the sum will be six dollar. So this is the utility of A and C together in transaction one. Means apple and cake together, okay? It makes six dollar in transaction one. Okay, so I think it is easy, right? Okay. Now, after this, maybe we want to calculate the money for an item set, the utility of an item set, not just for one transaction, but for the whole database, like for all the customers. So how to do this, okay? If you want to find the utility of an item set X for the whole database, we will do the sum of all the transaction TC that contain x okay so here gx means all the transactions that contain x so for all of them we will do the sum of the money of x in each of these uh, transactions so let me show you with the example how it works okay you will understand clearly 
So first, we need to find all the transactions that have A and C together in the database because we want to find all the money when the people buy A and C together, apple and cake, the utility of A and C for the whole database. So we find that A and C together appear in transaction 1, transaction 2, and transaction 3, as you can see here. In the first transaction, we have one apple for $5, so we'll put 5. We have one cake for $1, so we do plus 1. Now, in transaction 2, we have two apple for $5, so 10. Six cake for $1, so we'll do plus 6. Now we do transaction 3. One apple for five dollar, so plus five, and one cake for one dollar plus one. So the total for apple and cake, they must be together, okay, is twenty-eight dollar in the whole database. So this is how we calculate the utility of a set of items in the whole database. Okay, so I hope this is clear. Now, let's move on to the next definition, okay? We want to find the sets of items that the people buy that make a lot of money. So we call this the high utility item set. Utility means, for example, the money, okay? High utility means a lot of money. So we'll say that a set of item X, an item set, will be a high utility item set if the utility, the money, is at least equal to some threshold that we will set, okay? So if the utility of X is greater or equal to some minimum value, some threshold, then we say it is a high utility item set. So let's take an example. If I say the minimum utility is 20, then AC will be a high utility item set because the, the utility or the money of AC we calculated before it is 28 and it is greater or equal than 20. If it, is, if it was less than 20, then we say AC is not a high utility item set. Okay, so this is the definition, what we want to find in the data. Now I will give you the problem definition, okay, and then later I can show you the algorithm. So now we have everything we need to explain the problem definition. In high utility item set mining, this is the name of the problem, the input will be a transaction database with the quantities as we I explained before. And also we have a table about the profit of items, as you can see on the right. And then the user will have to set a minimum utility threshold. And the goal will be to find all the sets of items that the people buy together that will make at least this amount of money. So the output, for example, if we say the minimum is $30, the output will be all the item sets that make at least $30 in the database. What we call the high utility item set. This is what we want to find. So in my example, if we set the minimum to 30, this is the result we want to find, the high utility item set. And as you can see, all these item sets have a utility or profit that is 30 or more okay the other item set we don't want to find them because they are less than 30 so I hope this is okay this is the problem we want to solve so now there's a lot a lot of researchers that work on this problem why why this problem is interesting so, in terms of uh, com 
calculation for the computer science researcher it is an interesting problem because it is not easy okay let me talk to you a little bit about this first one challenge is that the search space is huge it means there are a lot a lot of possibilities or combinations for example we could buy a apple b bread c cake or we could buy two items together like a b a c a d or three together like a b c or more like a b c d e and so on in my example i only have a few items like a b c d e f g but if you had a very big store like with millions of items the number of possibilities will be huge okay so one challenge to solve this problem is that there are a lot a lot of possibilities and if you want to design an algorithm for this task you want to find a solution quickly but you don't want to look at all the possibilities and another challenge why it is difficult to solve this problem is that the utility of item set the money is not anti-monotonic or monotonic okay so what does it mean okay let me explain to you it means that the utility of an item set may be equal greater or the same as the utility of its superset okay so let me explain what that means with an example let's say that you have bd okay bd make 30 dollar if you have the superset like bcd maybe it will make more money like 34 dollar because um maybe you buy more things together but if you look other item set like bcd it can make also more money but sometimes it will make less money so if i go back for example a b c d e f make only 30 dollar okay so why a b c d e f make less money than b c d e this is something very strange okay so sometime if you take the superset of bd like bcd it can make more money or the superset can make less money like a b c d e f so the reason is like this sometime if you buy more items together of course it make more money because you buy more things together but also if you buy more things together maybe there are less people that will buy all these things together so it can decrease also the money so this is something special about the, that problem that make it more difficult to design the algorithm okay so how to solve the problem there exist many algorithms here uh, i present a few of them and all these algorithms they have the same input and output exactly the difference will be about the data structure the optimization the strategies okay and some programming tricks to um, find the solution more quickly or to use less memory and so on and the key idea in all these algorithms will be to use some upper bound on the utility that will be anti-monotonic to be able to reduce the search uh, space so if you don't know what i mean by this it is okay okay i will explain more later okay so now i will explain one algorithm that is very very efficient it is one of the best even today okay it is called efim and also it has some interesting techniques so that's why i will talk about this today so efim it is an algorithm and what is special about it 
it will do a depth first search okay i will talk more about this and it will read the database to calculate the utility of the item set and the upper bounds and also we will say that it uses a pattern growth approach to only look at patterns that exist in the database okay so this is some idea in this algorithm i will explain more later okay and also this algorithm has introduced some new idea it used the transaction merging and some other techniques okay so today i will explain these techniques to you you will see step by step how it works okay so first before i give you the algorithm i will first explain how the to explore the search space how the efim algorithm will explore the search space then i will explain to you some techniques and at the end i will explain how all of this is put together in the efim algorithm i will explain like this step by step because it is uh, easier to understand okay So first I will talk to you about the search space. So to talk about the search space, let me give you some definition. How do we search for the item set? So in EFIM like other algorithm, we will use some order on the items. The order, we can use different order, but we will assume that there is some order. That order will use for uh, processing the items process them in some order to make sure we we don't find for example the same item set twice okay so there are different order we can use different orders uh, one of them we can use in the example i will give to you is the lexicographical order is the order like a b c d and so on so this order is e is after d d after c c after b and b after a okay so this is one other the efim algorithm can use to process the item to search for the item sets but there are other other we can use and actually in the paper of efim they use another order called the twu ascending order but here I will not explain this, okay, because it is more advanced, but it is just to say that we need some order, okay. Here I will just use the order like A, B, C, D to make it more simple. Now, if we want to talk about the search space, all the possible item set, we can think about this as a tree, okay. This is what we call a search a set enumeration tree what i show you on the picture here okay it is a tree with all the possible combinations if we have four items like a b c d okay only a b c d so on top we have the empty set then under we have a b c d then a b a c a d and so on okay so you can think about this as the different combinations and the algorithm will search in this tree to find the high utility item set. So the EFIM algorithm will start from the empty set, then it will do the depth first search. It will look like A, then AB, then ABC, ABCD. Then it will go back ABD. Then it will go back AC, ACD. Then it will go back AD and so on. Okay. It will do what we call depth first search. This is how to explore the tree, the order, okay, like this. Now, to explore the search space, if EFIM will start to search from the item set alpha, that is the empty set. Alpha means the current item set, okay? So it will start by alpha is empty means no item at all okay then from this empty set efim will try to add more item to make the the bigger item set 
for example from the empty set EFIM might add the item A to make the item set A. Then from A it can add B to make AB. Then from AB it can add a C for K to make ABC and so on. So it will recursively extend the, the item set alpha, the current item set alpha, by adding some item like B or C to make the bigger item set like from A to AB from AB to ABC and so on okay so it will be a recursive process now to avoid exploring the same item set twice we don't want to find the same item set like ABC many times to avoid this problem we need to extend the item set by following the order we define the processing order like ABCD and so on so what that means if we have the item set A we can extend with B to make AB because B is after A we need to follow the order okay also if we have AB we can add a C because C is after AB so we follow the order ABCD okay and BC we can add a D because it also follow the order ABCD but if we have B we cannot add the A because A is before B okay we need to follow the order so if we don't follow the order we could find a B again okay so if we have B we don't want to add A and if we have CD we don't want to add B also because it does not follow the order okay so we have this simple rule in EFIM to make sure EFIM will not find the same item set many times we need to add the item one by one but to follow the order also so more formally if I want to define this a little more clearly if we have an item set alpha we will write E of alpha it will be the set of all items that we can use to extend the item set alpha so let me explain with an example if you have the empty set nothing then E of the empty set will be all the items that you are allowed to add to the empty set to make the larger item set so it will be A, B, C, D, E, F, G because if the, the, we have the empty set we can add anything to make the bigger item set by following the order okay now if we have the item set A what are the items we could add to A we could add the items that are larger than A according to the order they are B, C, D, E, F, G but not A of course because we have A already now if we look E of A, C what item we could add to from A, C to make the larger item set of course we cannot add A again and C again and also we cannot add B because B is smaller than C and as I told you we need to follow the order so we can only add what is after C like D E F G so this is some principle the EFIM will use to extend the item set it need to follow the order okay so more formally we will talk about the extension of the item set if we have an item set A and then we add some items one or more items to make a bigger item set like ABC we will say that ABC is an extension of the item set A because it is A and we have added more items and also we have respected the order okay so we say it is ABC is an extension of A another definition we use in EFIM is called the single item extension single item means 
it is an extension but we add only one item we don't add many items so for example AB is a single extension of A because we have added only one item to A to make AB we have added the B okay to make AB and but ABC is not a single extension of A because we have added two items B and C to make ABC okay so this is the concept of single item extension okay so I hope this is okay so this is about the search space now I will explain some other idea that are important in, in EFI another idea is the concept of projection okay so I will explain to you what it means in EFIM EFIM will explore the search space the different possibility the different item set to find the high utility item set and when EFIM will look at the different possibilities it will read the database to calculate the utility of the item set to decide they are high utility item set or not so but every time EFIM will read the database it will take some time because maybe the database has many many transactions and you need to read the database okay so how to reduce the cost of reading the database to count the utility of the item set so I will talk to you about one idea in EFIM it is called the high utility database projection okay I will show you how it work with example and one assumption in this is that the transaction will be sorted according to the, the same order okay as I explained before like A B C D and so on so let's see how it works okay I will explain this and some other technique and then I will talk more about the algorithm so let me define first what is a projected database in EFIM at the beginning of the algorithm when we run the EFIM algorithm we have a database as you can see on the left and the projection of a database with an item set alpha will be some operation we do on the database to make the database smaller okay so let's see how it works then I will tell you more about why we do this why EFIM do this so if you have the item set alpha equal a apple you want to take the original database and you want to do the projection with a so what we will do we will find all the transactions that contain a first t1 t2 t3 they have a then what we will do we will remove the a and we will keep everything that is after the a like c and d or c e g or b c d e f okay and the other transactions that don't have the a we don't need to keep them okay so the result of this will be the database projected by a okay so in EFIM we have the original database and when we we search for the item set we want to find the item set that start with a like a b a b c or a d and so on we will EFIM will create the projected database of a and when it will do this it will remove the a and all the transactions that don't contain the a and everything before the a and why it will do this because all the extension of a like a b a b c a b d and so on if we want to find the utility we don't need to look at the other transaction that don't have the a so this uh, projection will make the database uh, smaller like this okay as you can see here so now we have the projected database of a 
any item set that start with A. We don't need any other information. We have everything here, like to do AC, AD, ACD, and so on. Okay. Now we have a smaller database to look at all the extension of A. So why we do this? Because in the projected database of A, we will have all the information that we need to search for the extension of A. And this projected database will be, will be smaller than the original database. So it will be more quickly to process this database to find the highest utility item set. Here I have another example. Now I have the projected database of A. And we will do the projection again. But this time, we will do the projection by D to get the projected database of AD. So again, what we will do, we look all the transactions that have D, like T1 and T3, and we remove D and everything before. So here, in the first transaction, we remove D, everything before. The second transaction, we don't have D, so we can remove completely. And the third transaction, we remove D and everything before. So this will be the result. This is the projected database of AD. And if we want to find any extension of AD, like ADE, ADF, we only need to look at this small database here. Okay, it has all the information and it is smaller. So this will be very efficient. Okay. So why we do the database projection? It is because as EFIM will explore the larger and larger item set in the search space, the database will become smaller and smaller because EFIM will always do the database projection. And this will reduce the time required to read the database. But one problem about this is if you do all these database projection, you need to always make some copy of the database. So do you think maybe it will use too much memory or not? So maybe, okay, so there's one solution to this. The solution is to do what we call the pseudo projection. There are other algorithms too like this also, okay. So here we have the database D on the left, as I explained, and we can do the projection by making a copy of the database, but this will take much memory. Now, a better way to do is to do the pseudo projection instead of making a copy of the database, as we see here, we can use the pointer here. The arrows are the pointers. Okay. We only need three pointers on the original database and we don't need to make a copy like on top. It will be the same information. If you use three pointers, it is the same as if you had made a copy on top. So this is one very efficient way to do the projection to reduce the memory. So this is just the main idea about one way to do an in EFIM. Okay, now I want to introduce another idea very important in EFIM. It is the transaction merging. Okay, I'll explain to you with some example how it works. So in EFIM, another technique very important is the transaction merging. So the idea is the following. We made some observation. In the database, or projected database, and EFIM, many times there will be the identical transaction. That means two transactions that are exactly the same, like ABC and ABC. So if we have many, many transactions that are the same, we can merge them. That means we take all of them, and we combine them together to make only one transaction. And this will reduce the memory and also the time, every time we want to read the database. So this is very powerful technique 
that was uh, introduced in EFIM for the high utility item set mining. So how to do? Okay, let me show you the idea with an example. So on top I have the original database and at the bottom I have the projected database of C, okay, as I explained before. Now, if you look at the projected database of C, you can observe that two transactions are the same because they have E and G together. Okay, both of them is E, G. The number, the quantities are not the same. This is not important. Okay, 2, 5 and 1, 2. But the items are the same. So, one observation is that we can combine them together like this okay you can do e2 plus e1 it makes e3 and g5 plus g2 make makes g7 and this will not change anything to the result the final result so when we have the transactions that are the same we can merge them together and we do the sum of the quantities and this in some database it will increase the speed by 10 times or 100 times. It is very, very powerful. And it will reduce the database by many, many times in some cases. It is really important. But if you want to do the merging, how can you do? It is not so simple. Because you need to find the identical transactions, the transactions that are the same and to, to be able to merge them. So how to do? One naive solution, it means simple solution, will be to compare each transaction from the database with all the other transactions. But maybe there are too many transactions and this will take exponential time. You compare all the transactions with all the other one. Okay, it will take so much time. So in EFIM, there's a special trick to find all the transactions that are the same in linear time. Okay, so here I will not explain the details, but the trick will be to sort the database in some special order. And if you sort the transaction of the database in some special order but backward, all the transactions that are the same will always be one after the other in the database and then you can read the database only one time and merge all the transactions that are the same like super fast okay so if you are interested to see how it works you can check the the paper okay for more details about this how to do it now Beside that, there are some other important ideas in EFIM, okay, about how to reduce the search space. Reduce the search space, what does it mean? It means we don't want to look at all the possible item sets. We want to eliminate some of them and still find all the high utility item sets. So, how can we reduce the search? Okay, so I will explain this to you in EFIM. So EFIM will reduce the search space using some upper bound on the utility. We call the local utility and the subtree utility. I will explain how to calculate this, okay? And then I will show you how it is useful to eliminate the possibilities, some possibilities. And I will explain with some example. It will be much easier to understand. I will give you also some definition, but with example, it is much easier to understand. And later, if you want to have the proof and so on, you could check the paper, okay, for more details. But for now, with some example, it will be the best way to explain. So first, I need to introduce one definition, the remaining utility. I need to define this first, okay, before I explain the other idea. If we have an item set X, like Apple, 
the remaining utility will be the, the utility of everything that appear after Apple in the transaction. Okay, so let me show you how to calculate. If you want to find the remaining utility of uh, Apple, okay, what it will be for the for the database, okay. Here we have on top the definition for a transaction, but here I will explain for the database, okay. So you, we need to find all the apples. Apples are in T1, T2, and T3, and then we take the utility of everything that is after like cd okay c and d the utility will be three because one multiplied by one plus one multiplied by two two plus one is three okay the remaining utility of a in transaction two will be the utility of c plus e plus g it will be 17 and the remaining utility for A in B, C, A in transaction tree will be the sum of utility of B, C, D, E, F. It will be 25. So the total will be 45. So what does it mean, the remaining utility? It means if you want to add something, extend A to make the larger item set, in the transaction with A, what is left after A, there is 45 more dollar if you add some item to A, okay, to make the bigger item set. So now, I have another example, like AB, okay, if we look at the item set AB, we want to find the remaining utility of AB, so A should be AB, okay, you can ignore this, okay. So, to find the remaining utility of AB, we need to find the transaction with AB. There are only one, T3. And we take the utility of everything after, C, D, E, F. Okay. So, C, one time, one. That means one. Six, D. D is a two dollar. So, two multiplied by six means twelve. So, twelve plus one is thirteen. E is 1. 1 multiplied by 3 means 3, plus 12, 15. And 5 multiplied by 1, it means, uh, I think we are at, uh, it gave uh, 21, I think, okay. Or maybe I made a mistake. But the remaining utility will be the utility of all of this. It should be 21. Now, let's see how this is useful, okay? We can compute something interesting. We call the local utility. Okay, so the local utility of an item set alpha, what it will be, okay? Related to an item Z. So the local utility of an item Z with respect to alpha. So, how to calculate? It will be the utility of alpha plus the utility, the remaining utility uh, after this. Okay, so let's see how it works. I think it's best to just explain with an example. So, if alpha is empty and we want to see how much money we can do if we add the item A or any other item with A, okay, to the empty set. So, the local utility will be calculated like this. We take all the transactions that contain alpha, the empty set, and also A, okay. And then we take the remaining utility after the empty set, that means everything in the transaction, the utility of A plus C plus D, A plus C plus E plus G, A plus B plus C plus D plus E plus F. So in T1, it will make 8, 27, and then 30 in T3. The total, it will be 65. 
and why we want to find this okay you don't know why we want to do this but this will be very useful because it is an upper bound this value 65 will tell you that any item set that contain a cannot have the utility more than 65 so if you make like a b a b c a b c d all of them cannot have a utility more than 65 so let's say you want to find a high utility item set with utility more than 70 then you don't need to look with anything with a apple because anything with a will not make more than 65 dollar money okay so calculating the local utility is very very useful to speed up the algorithm now we take another example let's say alpha is d and we use uh, e we want to find the utility that the item set could have if they have d and we want to add e with something else okay how much money it could be so we'll calculate this so we need to find all the transactions that have d and e together so t3 and t4 and we take the utility of d and everything after okay so this is the local utility so here in t3 it will be d and e and f 20 and d and e it will be 9 so it will give us 29 and what does it mean it means that any item set that extend d and contain e cannot have the utility more than 29 it must be 29 or less so this is very useful to eliminate the combinations uh, we have another example here d and f okay we want to find the item set that have d and f and that are larger than d and f uh, so how much could be the the utility could be d and f or d and f and something else like dfg so again what we do we find the transaction with d and f like this and we take the utility of d and everything after so def it gives 20 and so it says that any item set that extend d and contain f it could be d f d e f or d f g and so on cannot have more than 20 for the utility so this is very useful for the algorithm to eliminate the combinations now beside that there's another upper bound called the subtree utility that efim will use to eliminate the combination so let me explain to you briefly how to use it and how to calculate okay so again we have some complicated definition but i will explain with the example it will be easier to understand so again we have an item set like alpha like d and we want to add some item like f okay so the subtree utility for d with f how to calculate okay so first we find the transaction that have d and f together here like t3 we take the utility of d and also of f but and everything after f okay but we don't keep what is between d and f that is the the key difference with what i showed before so and here this will give you 17 it means that any item set that extend df cannot have the utility more than 17 but here we don't consider def okay we want to find the extension of df like dfg so that's why we don't include the e so it is different than what i show you before with the local utility so another example if you have a and c together and you want to extend with e okay we want to know how much the money could be everything that start with a c e okay so we need to find all the transaction with a c e 
like T2 and T3. And then we take the utility of AC with E. Okay. And everything after. So AC plus E and G. Here G is included. Okay. And in T3, it will be A with C. And also, uh, what is after E? Okay, so we don't take D, but we need to take E and F. And then we'll do the sum, and it will give us uh, 36. Okay. Here it's possible, maybe I did not count the G, okay, but I should have counted it. So maybe it is more than 22. But let's say it is 36. So this means that anything that starts with AC cannot have a utility more than 36, like ACEF, ACEG, and so on. So the algorithm will use this to reduce the search. Now in EFIM, based on the local utility and the subtree utility, it will define two sets of items what we call the primary item and the secondary item. So if you have an item set alpha like AC, the primary item will be the item that you can use to extend alpha using the subtree utility. And the secondary item will be the item we can use to extend alpha based on the local utility. So now, instead of explaining the complicated definition, I will try to explain just with an example what it means, okay? For example, if we have the item set alpha, and you calculate the local utility subtree utility, you can find that the primary items of alpha are C and E. Okay, and the secondary item of alpha are CDE. This is based on the subtree utility and the local utility. And what does it mean in practice? It means that if you have AC, uh, A, if you have A, okay, you should only use C and E to make AC and AE, okay. But you don't need to look at AD, the extension of AD. So we can eliminate a lot of combination. We only need to look at the extension of AC and AE to find the high utility item set. Everything starts with AD. D is not here, okay? It cannot be the high utility item set. And what does it mean, the secondary item is CD? It means that from AC and A, we can use uh, CD and E, okay, any of them is okay, maybe it will make the high utility item set, but other item like F and G, we should not use them, okay, but uh, CD is okay. So if I want to look at this with a picture to explain, okay, we have the item set alpha. We want to extend it to find other item set, the high utility item set. Since we find the primary item of alpha are C and E, we will only look at what starts from AC or A. We will not look at AD or AF or AG and so on. Okay, We only need to look at this part of the search space. And since we have the secondary item or CD, so that means from AC, we can only use CD to look at the larger item set. We cannot use F and G, for example. So I did not put F and G in this picture, okay? And from AE, also, we, can, we cannot use F and G. So these are the only item set we need to check starting from A, AC, ACD, ACE, ACD, and A. So this is how we use the local utility and subtree utility to eliminate a lot of combinations, okay? This is just the, the main idea. Actually, if you look at the paper of EFIM, 
you will find the formal definition and the proof and so on okay for all of this but today i try to give you the main idea because uh, efim is a quite complex algorithm actually okay so let's continue so there are actually more details in the paper but today my goal as i said is to give you some overview the main techniques in efim in the paper there's also some improvement like the revised subtree utility uh, i will not explain this here okay it will be a little complicated but you could see the paper for more details now in efim there's also another technique uh, that efim used to calculate the utility very very quickly and the upper bounds using the arrays so i would like to explain this uh, quickly okay how it works to give you some idea so to calculate the utility of item set efim need to read the database every time to compute the utility and also the local utility or the subtree utility and to do this quickly efim will use a special structure called the utility bins okay it is an array that will have the length that will be the number of different items in the database and this will allow efim to calculate the utility very very quickly in linear time okay so let me just show you the example how it works okay then i think you will get the main idea so efim if it want to calculate the local utility of all the items like a b c d e f and g what it will do it will create some array and the array will have zero okay everything will be zero at the beginning this means like we will read the database and we suppose that the local utility of a b c d e f g is zero now efim will read the first transaction and then it will increase the utility of a c d and that's all okay because transaction one contain only a c d now it will read the transaction to to update the items again here a c d e and g it will increase their uh, local utility then it will do the same for t3 t4 and t5 and when efim finish reading all the transaction only one time using this array it will have calculated the utility the local utility of all these item just in one time okay so efim don't need to read the database one time for each item it use some array and by reading the database only one time it can calculate the local utility for all the item and not only this also the utility the subtree utility and so on so this is a very very efficient technique called the utility bin okay so here i just give you the main idea again you could look at the paper if you want to know more about this but this technique is super powerful because you can calculate the utility and upper bound in linear time and the arrays also use the linear memory so they, they will use not a lot of space and you can always reuse this memory also so it will cost uh, a very very uh, small uh, cost in, t in terms of memory okay and also time now i explained already all the main techniques in efim so efim will do a depth first search and will apply all these techniques to look at the different item set and eliminate some combination using the upper bounds and it will also do the transaction merging or, and projection to reduce the database and use the array 
to count the yields everything. Okay. So here we have the code of EFIM, the pseudo code. So I will not explain all because I think it will be too much details. But the key idea, EFIM first will read the database and will keep only the items that might appear in the high utility item set base on the local utility. Then it will sort the database and then it will start the depth first search. Okay, so it will start from the empty set and then try like A, then AB, then ABC, and so on. Okay, it will do the depth first search and then it will use the upper bound to try to eliminate the combination as I explained before. So here we have all the code and uh, I mean if you want to know about this you could check the paper for the details okay. So now instead of giving more details about this I think I explained already all the key parts at least what is the most interesting in this algorithm. Now I want to show you the results for experiment to see how uh, is the performance of EFIM. So in the paper of EFIM, uh, they use the database, different database called Accident, BMS, Chess and so on, the benchmark database to see how's the performance of this algorithm. And all these databases have different number of transactions, item, different length for the transaction and so on. So here we have a comparison of EFIM. EFIM with only the local utility, that means without the subtree utility, and EFIM without the merging. Okay, so we have three versions of EFIM to compare them. And we have also some other popular algorithm for high utility item set mining, like HUI minor, HUP minor, and so on. And we have different databases, like one database, another, 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 and so on. Nine databases. And we look at the time, okay, when we change the, the parameter, the minimum utility, and we have the different algorithms. So what we can see here is that EFIM is super efficient. Here, for example, on accident it takes about 10 seconds but some other algorithm they take like 1000 seconds to find the same result. The second best algorithm is also EFIM. Okay, The two best algorithm are two versions of EFIM and all the other algorithm they take at least uh, 10 times uh, more time than EFIM to find the result. Some other database like uh, Connect, EFIM is about 100 times faster than other algorithm. There's a big difference, okay, and so on. So in general, EFIM is, is really, really good on all these databases. Only here, maybe, uh, D2HUP is a little faster, okay, but almost the same, actually. But not only this, in terms of memory, EFIM is really, really good. It uses a lot less memory than all the other algorithms that we compare, okay, in this paper. So EFIM here use, for example, um, 71 megabytes, but all the other algorithms use at least twice or more in this database, for example. So because EFIM use the very compact uh, structure and use the tr merge the database and so on, okay, to save the memory. So it's really, really efficient. And about the merging operation, we can see it is really, really uh, useful on some database. Some database like accident it can reduce the database by 99% when we do the merging, but other database less. Okay, so here this table show about 
the size of the database, the number of transactions when we do the merge for different database. And some database is very, very powerful, this technique. So, in conclusion, today I have explained to you the EFIM algorithm. I try to explain the main idea, okay, because this algorithm is quite complex. But with example, I give you the main idea. Then if you want to learn more, you can now read the paper, it will be easier to understand, okay. And EFIM is one of the best, because the operations are in linear time, and also does not use a lot of memory. This is one big advantage. And also you can get the code in Java, the data set for your research if you want, in the SPMF library. It is a free open source. So that's all for this video. Uh, thank you again for watching. Okay, bye.